And on your very first trip to Greece, you were traveling on a budget, and when you ordered wine in a Greek taverna, what you got was a very cheap, rosinated wine, which immediately created within you a long life aversion to the very notion of ever drinking a Greek wine here in the United States. Well, the Greek wine industry is now launching a counterattack upon that perception of Greek wine. The attack is being generaled by our next guest on today's Almanac of Travel. He is Mr. Chris Rota, the president of Word of Mouth Incorporation, Incorporated, rather, which is a company that represents various food and wine uh, interests. And you have apparently revealed to the public that Greek wine isn't all rosinated. And why have we all formed that impression? Well, it's that's the only wine that we we find over here because Greek wines are hard to find in in uh, America. And when you go into Greece, the cheapest wine, of course, is a rosinated wine, which right. is what the local people drink. That and that's ancient Greece. Uh, that's what they drank uh, centuries ago when there was no refrigeration, no way to keep the wines cool. So they would add resin, pine resin, which their Greece is full of pine trees. They would add this resin at the fermentation point. It would then mask any flavors or spoilage that would occur in the wine through these very primitive ways of making wines. And then later, people acquired a taste for the very sure. rosin, which is a very peculiar local taste that none of the rest of us share. Exactly. Same, people why, same reason why people drink scotch, why people drink Chianti, and so forth, is because they developed this, this uh, flavor affinity. Now, Greece has really moved ahead to try and uh, improve the quality, uh, because Greece, uh, in, in Greece, wine was just a commodity. It just uh, came with the meals and appeared in the tavernas. But what they have found now in Greece is that there are some really prime wine growing areas. And they're setting these aside uh, in appellations. And anytime you find a wine label VQPRD, which means Va Qualita Produit dans uh, Regional de Marque, mm -hmm. which is really the French. Uh, uh, Appellation, Appellation Controle, Controle, as they call exactly. it. And, and the uh -huh. Dominazione Origine Controllata in Italy, the same thing. They're setting these vineyards aside. Um, uh, and the grapes can only be so many vines per acre, they can only be harvested so many tons per acre, and the wines really are more than a cut above, they are absolutely superb. Superb wines. Isn't it amazing how one feels like clapping one's hand to the forehead and saying, of course, I mean, Greece has the classic climate for wine. It is, it is sunny and hot and dry during the spring, summer, and early fall. It mm -hmm. has a mild winter. It has mm -hmm. a certain amount of rainfall in certain uh, areas. It should be producing great wine, and you say that they've now turned to it. For right. the it's very much like California. Very similar climates, very similar herbs and, and plants. As a matter of fact, I'll be working in my backyard in California, and I'll uh, chop down an anise plant that grows like a weed all around, and I'll smell that, and it just takes me back to, to Greece, mm -hmm. because uh, anise, of course, grows, abounds in Greece. Now, these Greek wines, they're starting to appear now in liquor stores throughout the United yes. States? Yes, yes. For the very first time, too, in yes. quantity, I would assume. And, and in quality. Um, and in quality. We have a couple of wines here that are just absolutely well, dynamite. Well, would you start opening them, because it would just be sacrilege to have you here and not taste these Greek wines. Thank I've you. never tasted a Greek wine after that first disastrous experience with the Resonato wines. Boy, and you, I, I remember that I asked the, the waiter afterwards, I said, suppose you want it without the resin, without the rosin in it, and he said, then you ask for it a resinato, and I dutifully said that in my guidebook, but I never again in the succeeding 20 years ever had another uh, another Greek wine. While you're opening the bottle, yes. let me ask you this. Does, this. does this wine, when it does appear in the United States, sell for less than a French or an Italian wine, Greece being a low-cost country with low labor uh, expenses and the like? Well, not only that, the, uh, the demand isn't there yet, so uh, the, it's a great value. Uh, and They're I'd pricing it in order to create a demand exactly. because very few people would ever think of going into a wine store in the United States and saying, do you have any Greek Greek wines? Now, the wine you're opening is a white yes. wine, a dry this white is, wine, and it's called what? This is Apelia, and it's, from, it's by Kutar, Kutarakis, and it's from Marco Polo, which is right on the plain of Attica. Now, think of this. When you're drinking this wine... These grapes, the Sabatiamo grape, which means Saturday in Greek, but it's the same grape that goes into Ratsina, uh, growing from the same soil that if you stand there on the plain of Attica and look up and see Mount Penedus or Mount Imitos, these were the mountains that 
the marble was being mined to build the Acropolis. This is when you start drinking in the and whole you mean this is the, the wine that the Demosthenes drank, and Plato, and Aristotle, well and be. Socrates drank this wine, and I am all... Now, this is uh, not chilled. Over. Yes, that's true. But, uh, that's true. Now, because we... And would you join me in oh, this? Yes, and we're going, to, we're going to take this down. I have another segment on the Almanac of Travel, but nevertheless, I'm going to <laughs> go ahead. To your good health. You're supposed to Cheers smell it first, to, right? You, you yes, create a bouquet. Smell it. You smell it, and then you sort of slurp it in. Isn't right, that now, There's I, no I, rosin what? in this wine. None. That's true. This is, this is the Savitiano grape, which makes, is the base wine for uh, Retsina. It has a nice, pleasant it's a nose. glorious wine. It has no tartness to it. It is, it is mm -hmm. smooth. It is mild. Mm -hmm. It is a fine wine. Clean. Do you happen to know how Very much clean. this would sell for in a wine, in wine store rather um, in the United States? Probably $4.00. Four dollars. Four dollars. Your one is now paying eight dollars for French wines and even for uh, even Long if, Island wines. Even you pay that wines. much. Having tasted this, my appetite is whetted. Can you open the red wine? I'm going to ask you, and then we're going to serve okay. the rest of this white wine to the cameraman and to the floor managers right. at the. <laughs> we have applause right. from out there. But let's now try the red wine. Let okay. me just say to the viewer that this is as fine a white wine as I've ever uh, had. Can you imagine uh, how it would be chilled? Yes. It would be lovely. Uh, as fine as Macon, as fine as Puy we say, a mild, lovely white wine with a very interesting bouquet, mm -hmm. isn't it? Now okay, now you have a little left in your glass, but let me ask you to fill my glass. I've devoured it. I'm a, I'm a wino. Okay. That's spelled K-N-O-W. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> All right. Now this and Greece wine, is now making a major effort to get these wines accepted in the United States. Yes. And, of course, they can all be ordered in Greece. Oh, well, absolutely. Uh, you, see, somebody once told me that tasting wine is one thing. As a matter of fact, there's a Greek winemaker that told me this in Porto Carras. He says, and then when you go to Greece, they all want to take you up to their mountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, tasting wine is one thing. He said, but if you taste a wine and then look at the mountain from where the grapes came and then drink all of that in, that's tasting wine. See, that's the total, total difference. Do the wineries invite visitors in Greece? Do they actually show the processes of wine no, uh, production? The, the, my client, uh, Hepo, H-E-P-O, the number that you're going to see mm -hmm. on the TV a little bit later, is in the process of designing some wine tours. And if you're in certain areas, there are certain wineries that uh, you could definitely pop in and, and they'll be happy to show Keppel you. Keppel being the export creating arm of the Greek government which right. now sees a potential for the wine. We have less than a minute okay. left. Let's try the red wine and this is what's the this name of this wine? This is Cabotsantalis. Hmm. Now the grape variety is 20 percent Cabernet Sauvignon which is a French cultivar that is now being grown and tried in Greece. The 80 percent is a Xenomavro, which is another grape variety that comes from the area in the northern part of Greece near Yugoslavia, what I call the Napa Valley of Greece, Nausa. And you'll be hearing more and more about the wines of Nausa. Absolutely incredible. I tasted this wine in Greece and only one word came out of my mouth, and that was, wow. Would you, would you pr uh, pour some for yourself uh -oh. using this Pythagorean cup? Pythagorean would you cup? explain to our right. viewers what a Pythagorean cup this is? This was uh, developed by Pythagoras. Uh, in the 3rd century B.C., he was a mathematician, developed algebra. And in those days, glasses were rare, and if you had a glass of wine, you were a member of a guild or something. And so everybody was very conscious about their measure mm -hmm. that was poured. And there's a little line in here. On the inside of the on cup. On the inside. If you pour it to the line, everything is fine. You can enjoy the wines and nothing happens. But if you go over the line, then everything comes out the bottom <laughs> and you lose your measure. Let's stay within the measure. I don't want to lose I... my lap here. <laughs> I have to go outside. All right. And here, a Greek red wine, which was the rosinated variety that I first had to your health. No, no, this, was a, this is a very French in style. I see. You notice I kept my, my measure. Very, that's plummy chocolate. This would go with lamb, with roast. Another marvelous wine. Another smooth, <laughs> lovely wine. Selling also for $4 in wine stores in the United States? Mm. $5 oh, or so. $5 at the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it's an excellent new product for all of us to try. It's an excellent new reason for enjoying a trip to Greece, as we Absolutely. now realize that when you go to a Greek restaurant, as long as you ask for a branded wine, as long as you don't simply accept the local right. house wine, I assume in Greece, if you if you simply ask for the table wine, they're going to give you the resonated wine, sure, unless you ask for it a resonato, in which case you get a, only a slightly better type That's of right. very raw, rough wine. 
But I, I find this wine the, the equivalent of any wine. I knew and you I, would be surprised. I let me take one last... Uh, to your health, Alfred. To your health. And suitably lubricated and unable to speak properly, I need to tell you that if you want more information about the wines of Greece, the well-known brand wines of Greece, there is an address to which you can write, which will now appear on our screen. It's Hellenic Export Promotion at 150 East 58th Street, New York, New York, 10022. Or if you would prefer, you can phone Hellenic Export Promotion at their number in New York, 212-751-2404. And you can obtain from Chris uh, a complete listing of all the great uh, Greek wines, which henceforth you can request by name at your local store, and your guests for dinner are going to be astonished. In fact, you could play a little trick on them. You could serve this to them blindfolded. Exactly. And have them guess the country from which it comes, and, and nine out of ten will say France, won't they? France or California or Italy, and then... They'll name the... And then they'll say, no, it's Greece, and I paid two dollars less. Exactly. For it. Good luck to you in promoting Greek wines, which Thank indirectly you. also promotes travel to a country that deserves such heavy travel travel, which Absolutely. is the, the Isles of Greece, the Isles of Greece, this, this, this magnificent uh, land, which is one of the classic tourist destinations. And we'll be back with another guest in just a moment. <laughs>